Hi family, welcome back to another episode. Here I have a collection of stories pulled from people who work in nursing homes. Most of them come from people who work third shift or night shift. Interesting paranormal stories from those that deal with death on an almost daily basis. So sit back and enjoy the show. And if you like what you hear, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Story 1. Third shift. I work in a nursing home. Third shift. For the last year, I've been transferred to the first floor. I, among others, have seen some pretty weird stuff. It kind of starts like this. About six months ago, I started seeing really off-the-wall things. While all of us were at the nursing station, there are only four employees on third shift, first floor. We started seeing people coming out of the dining room, not in wheelchairs, but walking upright pretty darn fast. We saw a person down one hall walking out of one room and into the next room. Both of those rooms have non-ambulatory residents. Water turning on in the bathroom of one patient's room when there was no one in that bathroom. One resident that passed away about four months ago can still be heard laughing in the hallway. There's an entity that always runs in the same direction at lightning fast speed with arms flailing. I'm talking like 28 days later style. I sometimes see that up to five times a night, but only when I'm down one certain hall. I call that the track runner. These are some real common things that happen. About three months ago, I had a resident that was mentally with it, asked me to get the man out of her room. It literally gave me goosebumps. And when I asked her where he was, she said, right there by the mirror. Needless to say, I saw no one. So later on, I asked a co-worker if she had seen anything different or odd. Before I could finish my sentence, she told me to stop and went pale. About ten minutes later, she came to me again and started talking, mainly about things I'd posted above. We ended up at the nurse's station in a pretty good discussion, and all of us had pretty much the same story. Fast forward a few nights. The same resident that had asked me to remove the man from her room rings her call bell. I go down and I ask her what I can do for her and she tells me to get him out of there and I ask who and she says the person by the dresser. So now I'm thinking oh too cool. I step out in the hall and get another co-worker and I have her wait outside the door just out of sight as I return into the room The lady is now asking, Why is my husband with that stranger? My husband is dead, and I don't know that other person. I ask her where they are, and she tells me, Don't act that way with me. I'm not crazy. I know what I see. They are standing in the room. Then proceeds to get verbally abusive with me. The other co-worker comes in at this point, after hearing what's going on, and the resident goes through the same routine with her, about her husband and the stranger with him. So we get the charge nurse. Same routine. She goes on about her husband being in the room with a stranger that she doesn't know. Only she can see these two. About an hour later, another resident rings her call bell. At this point, two of us go down together. It's in a different hall. This resident is begging us to get her out of bed. Her words, I don't want to be in bed with him. He is not my husband. I don't know him. She was definitely shook up and agitated. So we transferred her to her chair and brought her out to the nurse's station with us. While we were getting her some coffee and graham crackers, another bell rang in a different hall. The charge nurse got that one. She comes back out and stated that the resident said there was a man by her TV that told her she wasn't going to be here much longer. She insisted that he was still here, although the charge nurse couldn't see him, even after turning the lights on. The first resident that saw her husband and the stranger rings her call bell again, so three of us went down, left one aide to watch the halls and answer call lights. This time, two of us stay in the hall, and only the charge nurse goes in. Residents starts talking about possession and demons. Very detailed, very scary. The resident who saw her husband and the stranger has a roommate, who is also with it mentally. She stated in a rather calm voice, What's he doing here? When asked who, she just said, Oh, Never mind, I must be getting confused in my old age. She's 86 and very sharp. 
we have one resident that not only believes in black magic, but has threatened to put a spell on me and other co-workers. She stated that if I was older or she was younger, she would put a love bonding spell on me to attach us now and in the afterlife. She wasn't so kind with her threats of magic to other co-workers. She outright threatened to harm one. I confronted her son and daughter, both in their 60s, about the whole magic thing. Both, at the same time, together, they not only said that she did practice, but that nothing good ever came out of it, and that they were raised around it, but had no wishes to participate in it now. They are both practicing Christians that go to church. I'm a Christian and have no desire to be involved in any way, shape, or form with magic. We also have things that move around at work. We know we put them in one place, but we'll find them in another. No one would fess up to moving them. Our front door has a code alert alarm on them. They'll go off on its own. This is set up on the inner doors, so it can't be the wind blowing too hard. This is something that will only go off if someone opens the door or walks through the door. And for some other reason, it never trips on any other shift, unless a resident with a code alert walks through the door. Several of us have seen faces in windows, on the fire escape doors leading to the stairs. Again, you can't get on the outside of these doors without setting an alarm off. Matter of fact, one of the first things I ever experienced out of the norm at work was on that floor. When I worked on the second floor, we had a lady that was out of it, didn't speak at all, and spent her waking hours sitting in a chair. One night, while doing rounds, she started talking. I don't want to die. 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 I don't want to go to the lot. My co-worker tells her, it's all right. Just go to the lot. We found her dead less than 20 minutes later. Story 2. We have a runner. I work at a nursing home in a small town in Ohio. I'm a night shift nursing aide. We work from 5.30 p.m. until 6 a.m. And we see it all. We, the aides, and some of the nurses are a pretty tight-knit bunch of people. So whatever spooky stuff I have heard from them, I know is the truth. My first experience occurred a few weeks after I started working nights. I happened to be the only person sitting at the nurse's station. I was reading. For some reason, I happened to look up and see someone standing in the hallway in front of one of the ladies' rooms. I thought it was odd, since I'd never seen the occupant of that room standing, ever. On second look, it was too tall to be the woman that was in that room. I couldn't make out any features. There were only a few lights in the hallway. So I got up to see which resident had gotten out of bed. When I did, there was no one there. That freaked me out a little bit. My second experience scared me more because it happened in broad daylight. Our shift had just started and I was walking down the hall and I saw this white thing go running across the hall from one room to another. That scared me badly. I don't think I went anywhere alone the rest of the shift. Some of the aides have heard someone call their name when there's no one else around. Also, there is a ghost that plays the piano in the dining room at night. I've never seen him, but some of the other nurse's aides have. I hope I never do. The creepiest thing is that before one of the residents die, one of the other residents will report seeing a man in black or a little boy wandering around the halls. One of the other aides I work with told me that when she worked a day shift, one of the residents had just died. She was packing up the lady's things when one of the nurses was there too. And a vase of flowers on the dresser, lifted off the dresser by itself, moved about three feet in the air, fell to the floor and shattered everywhere. There's also a ghost there that we have nicknamed Shadow Man because he is a darker than dark shadow, tall that just lurks around in the hallways or in the patients' rooms. Story 3. Mama Stories My mom has been a nurse in a nursing home for the past 15 years, and it's a pretty famously haunted place. It was originally in an insane asylum in the 1800s, but was converted into a nursing home after the turn of the century. I have heard several stories that have taken place within the walls of the old building.
but I will tell you only the freakiest ones. One story I heard happened about six years ago. A nurse was getting ready to clock out for the night when she noticed a tall figure standing in one of the rooms. She went to investigate, and she noticed that he was wearing a top hat and long, dark cloak. Thinking he was one of the patient's family members, she told the man that visiting hours were, in fact, over, and that he had to leave. The figure then started to walk past the foot of the bed. He stopped at the foot of the bed farthest from the nurse. The patient in that bed said to the nurse, I cannot go to heaven until you leave. The nurse left to clock out, walked back to the room, only to find that the woman who the figure was standing by, dead. One night, my mother was working second shift and had needed some help from one of the nurse's aides. She saw a young nurse with blonde hair walk down the hall into a dark room. My mother called out for her as she walked down the hall, but the girl would not respond. So my mom walked to the room, turned on the light, only to find the girl not there. There was no other exits from that room. People also, my mother included, see ghosts of monks that used to walk the halls of the old asylum. They would always walk in groups of three. One night, a nurse and a guy from maintenance was talking in front of a dark, empty room, which earlier that day, a patient had died in, when all of a sudden, this huge, dark hand came from the shadows of the room, reached out for the maintenance guy. The maintenance guy and the nurse both ran away and did not return for the rest of the night. A friend of mine from high school used to work there. They had closed an old section of the building and added a new addition. The old building is used for nothing other than storage. My friend was walking back to the old section to get some blankets when he heard music playing and what sounded like a gathering of people talking in an old entertainment hall. He said when he opened the door, there was nothing there except for an old wheelchair. He, too, ran out of there, not to return until the next day. One night during winter, a few of the nurses were going out behind the building for a smoke break when they saw the face of a man looking through a window of the back door. They were frightened and had the maintenance man go and check out the scene. Well, from what they said, there was a misty outline of a man's face still pressed against the door window, but there was absolutely no footprints in the snow near or around the door or surrounding areas. There was no footprints in the snow, but there was still the outline of a face pressed against the window. So, the maintenance man couldn't figure out how somebody had got to the door, peek in at the nurses as they approached to go outside without leaving tracks in the snow. Unless, of course, the man peeking in at them was a ghost.